since I first discovered Bitcoin in 2013, been of the opinion that this was the a parallel financial system that's being built. In the last 18 months, I've realized that it's bigger than just a financial system. It's in fact the entire system of value, transfer, storage and ownership in the new digital world. It is probably one of the biggest things I've ever heard of or seen, and it is an incredibly exciting moment in time to be part of it. Hey guys, welcome back to Library of Wealth. Today we have Raul Powell giving us an update on Bitcoin, Ethereum, plus his view on the current financial market and how the economy is faring under the current conditions. He'll also go over the economic decline we're seeing in the market. According to Raul, the recession is no longer a possibility, but rather our very reality. Many financial experts were concerned when the Fed declared many interest rate hikes this year to combat the record high inflation we're experiencing currently, and because of the economic slowdown, this will have a significant impact on the crypto markets as well. One of the most surprising events happening right now in the current market is the one-year rate increasing by 800%. There's a noticeable interest rate increase happening right now across equity and home markets, and is causing refinancing to skyrocket. The rise in oil rates, mortgage rates, yields, and the dollar, this is playing a major role in market volatility. Let's listen as Raul gives us his take on the crypto market and his financial outlook for the rest of the year. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content we do here on this channel. Let's get right into the video. Learning about the the discovery of oil when the you know the Rockefellers and all of these guys started figuring out that you know the oil was gonna make the world go round. Had you been an investor and a participant and understood what it could do and what businesses you could build across the network of oil or the mobile phone or the internet, the fortunes that were made, the changes that happened were so staggering. And this is happening faster. And at the very center of it is a system of money and value, which means that in itself, it is going to accrue value faster than anything else because that's what it's actually doing, is taking value from old places and putting it into a new place. So the opportunity set is so big, and it, it is that perfect nexus of macro and crypto, because the macro is so, f which we've known for so long, you know, the massive debt, the bad demographics, you know, the, the polarization of the world again, the deglobalization, the globalization, all the mess that that caused, all of that is going on in macro land, which is pretty miserable. And here's the solution in front of our eyes. I mean, what a time to be alive. And that's why it's so important. Everybody needs to understand this stuff, whether you're trading this stuff, building businesses, or you're just observing it. It is incredibly, incredibly important. Firstly, we're all learning together, as you made the point. Definitely. And none of us know the answers. <laughs> so... If we all learn together and we all learn at the same speed, that's just nice. It's nice to have a community. It's nice to have questions, people to ask. I don't know everything. Far from it. There's a lot of things I'll be dead wrong on. Some things I'll miss entirely. It's not my job. My job is to set everybody in the right course and let's figure out. That's why I speak to people like Yatsui about what he's seeing or I just got off the phone with... Um, with uh, John Wu from Avalanche, and I spoke to Anatoly from Solana, and I, I get to, I'm so privileged in getting to speak to people. And if I can share the, my learning as I'm chatting to these people saying, hey, what's going on in your ecosystem? How does this work? How are you seeing network adoption? How are you thinking about the future? What opportunities are you seeing? And everyone can watch over my shoulder. Then we all go together. And then the Ask Me Anythings are a way of us being able to chat about it. We, right. You know, that's the that's the joy of this thing. Raul goes on to say that he believes the leading platform Ethereum will likely outperform Bitcoin in the long run. Powell says that even though the top crypto asset by market cap beats Ethereum in total trading volume and number of active wallets, Ethereum has found a way to outperform Bitcoin over the last few years. Bitcoin exchanges more value each week than Ethereum does, but Ethereum has a lot of transactions. Raul says transactions are a little misleading because of its total value and number of active wallets, and Bitcoin beats both. 
as you said with the railroad with with the um, oil stocks, and it was the same with the railroad stocks. These were really important networks that got built. Yeah. Tons of stuff failed. There was tons of excess speculation. The United States would not be the United States without the railroad network or the oil network or the phone networks. So this is how big these things are. And let's figure out where the main opportunities may lie, because this one, unlike those, the average person can participate in on a pretty much equal footing because you're part of the network by owning a token. The way that I form an opinion and everybody should is you listen to a lot of broad based opinions. Sure, you can take the crackpots off from either side, but listen to a broad base of opinions. You know, like there's some really interesting opinions on why the ETH merge might be a mistake. You don't ignore them. You take them on right. board and then you weight them yourself. How important is that to me? I'm not sure. Very important. This is terrifying. Uh, I don't really care. That's OK. But having people's opposite opinions, differences, nuances, it's really important with a macro scenario. Just because I tell you what I think doesn't mean I'm right. But once you listen to a bunch of people, you can start formulating your own opinion, saying, you know, this is what makes the most sense versus what I'm seeing and thinking. And therefore, I can have these set of outcomes and actions. I think it probably outperforms because it is a very, very early stage. But the amount of development activity, the amount of GitHub lines of code that's that being created, the applications layer, um, you know, even things like the phone, this step and you know and these all don't have to work I'm, I'm not saying they're all amazing things and they'll all survive but the amount of stuff going on even what's been happening in the d gods nfts this week in solana solana nfts are a big deal so there's a lot going on there and there's not any other chain that has that level of activity outside of eth the one behind it is probably polkadot but polkadot has less end user there seems to be a lot of development but it doesn't have the value being exchanged on chain yet um but maybe because there's more complexity and you know avalanche is seeing a lot but it's it's not at the level of solana in any way shape or form yet but maybe it gets that because of their multiple different um um the kind of subnets so maybe they get more network effects i don't really know but so my guess is that <clears throat> If Solana continues in the way that it is, even acknowledging the fact that the chain has been breaking and they know that too, therefore, if your future discounted, you'll expect that that will happen less because they will address it. And therefore, over time, Solana probably does okay. That would be my bet. I, and I'm not going to be rude here, but this is first order thinking. First order thinking is recession bad. The actual thinking is, if there were to be a recession for three years, what are the central banks doing? Right, because that's unemployment rising for three years and inflation falling for three years. What would the central banks be doing? They would be trying to stimulate as much as possible because we have not had a four year recession in well, as long as I think not even the 30s. I don't think it was that long. So but let's assume it's the 1930s again. That is incredibly positive crypto because there's a right. massive debasement of currency having to happen to try and protect the world falling apart because of the debt burden. So right. don't, again, it's not about are we in recession? It is what is the outcome as growth slows? What happens to liquidity on a forward looking basis? Raul goes on to say in his interview that in his macro view, we are in fact headed for a recession, not just in the cryptocurrency market, but in the stock market as well. He believes it could be pretty bad initially, saying that the Fed shouldn't have done what they did, but the bond market tightened for them anyway, and that it wasn't the Fed that did it, but the bond market did it all. The Fed are gonna have to unwind it, and it could get messy. Using all the technical indicators that Raoul uses, his view is if we are going to reach a proper bounce or low, it happens in June. So between now and June, everyone is likely to panic. If the central bank reaches the inflationary threshold, Raul feels the Federal Reserve will have to intervene. Many analysts feel that the current banking system is on the verge of a collapse, and that the fiat currency world will have to make a major adjustment, or else it will ultimately come crashing down. 
However, there may be a ray of hope at the end of the tunnel. Raul says he still sees a potential bear market ahead. What do you think about Raul Powell's interview on the crypto and financial markets? Comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This is Library of Wealth. We'll see you in the next video.